I just take this class just because it sounded like it'd be a lot of fun. Um, it sounded very different from any other technical elective that's offered here at USC. I thought this class was going to be challenging because I had never taught before. And it actually turned out to be pretty challenging to like be able to come up with like effective lesson plans that a sixth grader would be able to, to understand and do an experiment for. Um, but it was it was definitely like worth it. And also I thought it was a great way to help me develop better communication skills and um, to learn how to speak in front of people and also a great way to give back to the community. I like working with students, I like volunteering, I like talking, I like engineering. Might as well try teaching. Um, but there's more to teaching than just talking, as Carol warned me, it's going to be one of the hardest things you'll do, but you'll be okay. Um, so with that in mind, a little bit of fear, I went in with an open mind and I found out I had an amazing experience. So. program, we're not only teachers, but we're also role models. And we might quite, we might quite possibly be their only exposure to the vast, vast world of engineering. And um, we just really wanted to get them excited about the field so that maybe they can want to continue higher education later and maybe even study engineering. We step into the role of the instructor. So no longer were we learning from the seats here, but we were up here teaching students um, K-12 through about engineering topics. And we taught at um, an elementary school. We did family science. So it was after school um, in the evening with their parents was a family science class towards fourth and fifth graders, but it was a, the majority of the, the audience there was uh, parents and children that were very young children that were like toddlers. So it was, it was very different because it was a lot louder. There was more of a language barrier because some of the, the parents uh, didn't speak much English. So All we did was take these cardboard strips, which are about a little bit longer than a foot, and uh, we folded it into a box and put a nail through it, and then we attached these magnets to the nail on the inside, and we wrapped it with um, copper coil. And then we had the kids spin the magnet with the nail, and it would hook it up to a voltmeter, and it would actually be able to read a um, voltage in millivolts. Each one. Yeah, this family created this crazy wind turbine. <laughs> That was like better than some of the professional ones I've ever seen. <laughs> Built like a simple model um, where this glove represented um, the heart and then we had like the tubing to represent the arteries and veins and the cup represented the body. So each one of the students built their own model and we filled it up with blood and we had them like apply a force to the glove and like see that it pushed water out. And then we went outside and poured water on here and then we could measure the voltage here as the water was being poured. And um, I think our highest reading was like 94 millivolts, so yeah. that was pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm 30. 30, okay. The activity in this lesson was to perform a bypass surgery. So we, we explained to them what, yeah, we explained to them. It was pretty, it was pretty advanced stuff. We explained to them what it was. And then we gave them a little tube with a piece of gum inside which represented the plaque and the clogged artery. And we had them make incisions and insert this bypass artery inside. But actually getting up in front of a um, school of a bunch of, let's say, fifth graders, they're all staring at you. They're all making first impressions. Their fifth graders are judging you, so it's a little, it's a little nerve-wracking at first. But um, it definitely improves your uh, speaking skills. First thing I found the most challenging was having a story because we can throw a lot of science, a lot of activities at the students, but in the end, they might not remember that in a week, a month, hopefully more than a week, but in a month, two months, years. But they'll remember the story. They'll remember why they were learning it, and hopefully that memory will make them want to learn more and will keep them interested in learning science. Maybe not what, what we taught them exactly, but wanting to learn more and pursue more um, in terms of their education. Uh, a lot of people were saying this, but distilling concepts, you only have four weeks and that's one concept per week. And being in school for so long, we know a lot of biology, we know a lot of science, we want to teach them as much as we can. And the hardest part was finding four topics that would be the most impactful, that would, be the, that would give them the most uh, understanding of, the, of our story, of our topics, and so that was really challenging. And finally, the preparation. This means just planning the lessons, doing the physical labor, buying the, buying the, the, the materials, preparing them. Like for this heart model, I just want to say, we had to, we had to poke holes in all of these Tupperware containers, and they're a lot tougher than you think. And so we had to, we had at least, we had 60 Tupperware containers, 
and we each did 30, and it took me at least three hours poking it with a pen in each one, and my fingers were all raw, and like, I didn't realize it takes so long, Kara tried to warn me, I didn't listen, and so a lot of the stuff is time management. Um, it's a lot of time management, that's like one of the biggest skills I've learned, because if you go to class, you don't do the homework, that affects you. If you go to a, if you go to a classroom, you don't have enough models for everyone, well, that affects a lot of 12-year-old kids, mm -hmm. and so you de definitely end up feeling bad. But we did we did come through. I didn't do that. Probably the biggest challenge for me um, in preparing the lessons is explaining concepts that oftentimes I spent months learning in class in about 10 minutes. Um, I took an entire course on electricity and magnetism, and the whole goal was to learn how changing magnetic fields produce current, and I had to explain it in 15 minutes. And um, I think that this is definitely a really useful skill because I'm sure later on in my career I'll have to explain what I'm doing to an audience who doesn't necessarily have a background in my field. So um, learning to explain concepts with just the bare minimum amount of detail without overwhelming them is definitely a skill that I've learned. Some of the challenges were not dumbing down the information too much because you know how kids can get so offended if you, you're challenging their intelligence and, and uh, but it, it was hard because we were explaining some complex concepts that sometimes I don't even understand. And uh, but we don't, you know, finding the balance between um, making it not too simple, but not you want them to understand, obviously. I had to come up with analogies. I thought that was kind of a hard part to come up with. <laughs> when we did the direct instruction, it was done in English. So you had the kids like nodding and the parents not having a clue what they, you just said. So that's what Ruben helped us with, and he helped us translate everything. So after he talked, they're like, oh, and they nah. started nodding too. So. Her model didn't exactly match up with what we had drawn on the board, so a lot of the students were confused. So we went back and thought how we can change it. So for the next week, we came back and we actually retaught the same lesson, but we did it. We, we started by saying, look, guys, last week we made a mistake. Our model wasn't good, and as engineers, it's your job to make good models to better explain and understand concepts. And since we, since our model wasn't good, we're going to change it to update it and make it better. So in that lesson, even though we taught the same concepts, we added one more concept about heart valves. But we essentially retaught the same thing, and this way we could talk more about what engineers did, what their responsibilities are, and what they can look forward to as being engineers. Because usually we're just doing a lot of science, and not, we only really get to talk about engineering. And a lot of them didn't know what engineers were and what they did. They all thought they were mechanics, car mechanics, <laughs> which is kind of engineering, but it's not exactly what we're going for. So uh, it was a good, it was a good, it was a good learning experience for us as well as for them. So managing wild situations such as the third lesson, where it's a huge sort of station activity. I basically at that point let thirty kids, thirty sixth graders, go into all these outside activities. And I, I, about 30 seconds into it, I realized that that was a horrible mistake. I had to have <laughs> some way of getting the kids <laughs> under control, and that was a really interesting experience. Time management uh, in the classroom itself, because you are solely responsible for controlling discussion, making sure you have enough time to get through everything, and making sure the kids get away with some enduring understanding. It's fun to actually apply a lot of the um, things you learn in school to actually the real world experiences. Um, seems like in, a, in college and um, basically the day to day life as a student engineer at USC, um, it's a lot of theory, it's a lot of book work, it's a lot of number crunching. Um, but when we actually get to go into these classrooms, we're, we're actually making things with our hands. If we're getting our hands dirty, we're taking these theories that we learned in, in our books and actually applying it to um, small models. And so it's cool to see how it actually works in real life. Not only did they learn, but I learned a lot myself, probably more than they did, actually. Um, but I learned learning how to control a classroom is so important for leadership, great for public speaking, because I used to be so scared to go up and, and uh, just like right now, and talk to a big group of people, but now it's really calmed my nerves a lot. I certainly know a lot more about animal locomotion concepts than I did before taking this class, just by having to analyze it um, trying to find fundamental concepts and it, it actually takes a lot of thorough knowledge about the topic to be able to explain it using basic principles, generally how something works. In the school setting we actually get to use a, a big picture, so instead of um, just running one simulation on the system, we actually get to see um, multiple people running multiple simulations and um, it allows us to see 
the whole grand picture. The cool thing about uh, teaching younger students is it actually opens your mind to a lot of different aspects of engineering. Um, for example, we made uh, wind turbines for one of our lessons, and so uh, we had the students, like uh, Kurt and uh, Sarah said, we had the students made their own blades. We say, okay, we want you guys to make these blades to be able to push wind the best. <coughs> so be able to capture the wind the best you can. And when I was thinking about it, I thought of a blade that, you know, had a large size to it, a uniform shape, and the blade that actually ended up um, creating the most amount of voltage was a blade that was shaped like a car. And I've never seen that in a textbook. And I don't know why that was. But it was actually really cool to see, and it really opened up my mind. <laughs> it was really fun to go into the class every week, and they're just really excited to see us. They're like, Barat, Barat. They actually, uh, it was, I thought it was awesome. Working with Iridescent is really different than other volunteer activities that I've done. Um, for one, it's more personal. We spend four weeks with the students um, and actually get to know them, get to talk to them. And two, um, teaching them is a little bit different than, say, volunteering at a soup kitchen because you're giving them something that you can, or that they can carry, that they can use through the rest of their lives. Um, and just maybe influencing their career path, I think, is something really valuable. So just seeing their faces light up and just seeing how much they've learned shows that you are making a positive influence. and. It's, it, it feels good because in general, usually, as a student, you don't have to do that often, especially for me. I haven't volunteered since high school, and this is a good time, and it reminded me why I like doing it so much. It was great to share my knowledge with students, and it was an amazing experience.